hi everyone uh, in this video we will be um, going through AWS code module 2 so specifically we will be uh, starting with SQL injection uh, as a login bypass and uh, after logging into the application we will be having a file upload functionality and uh, so instead of uploading a legitimate document we will be uploading a php web shell or php reverse shell and uh, after after uploading the reverse shell we will be um, triggering the uh, or opening the our uploaded page and we will be getting command command execution uh, using the file upload okay and uh, uh, so we will be getting the access of a container by uploading the file and after enumeration after enumerating the container we will be finding uh, uh, database credentials in the environment variable uh, in, a, in a script stored uh, within the container and <coughs> uh, the container will be running as ECS container role and uh, while after enumerating the permissions of this role you will uh, we will be uh, getting to know that we we will we can also read secrets so uh, and that secret will also be containing the same database credentials okay so there are two paths to uh, get to this rds uh, database in instance one is via abusing uh, aws privileges and one is uh, using hard coded credentials so these uh, the credentials for the rds database instance will also be stored in a file uh, so while enumerating the container we will be coming to know that we are having uh, cap test capability and our container will also be running as host pid namespace so combining these two things we will be able to break out of the container uh, by uploading uh, sorry by injecting shell code to a host process uh, and then after getting access of a of the host uh, upon checking the aws permissions of the host we will be coming to know that uh, our current role the current host role will be ec2 role and there will be a permissions boundary which uh, which will be limiting the privileges of the EC2 role and uh, by checking the permissions boundary we will we, uh, we will come to know that we can uh, run more instances more EC2 instances and uh, the permissions boundary will also show that we are having IAM pass role uh, privileges so uh, combining these uh, two three things we will be able to uh, start a new EC2 container uh, so, so no, uh, sorry not a container we will be able to start a new EC2 instance with uh, higher privileges so let's see this uh, in action So, so this is the application. Let me open Burp suit again. So I have already deployed this lab, uh, and after deploying this, you will be getting a URL of a application. So that will look like this. So this is the web application and if I turn my intercept on uh, so we will be able to see sorry not intercept so I, I have just changed the proxy setting to 127.001 uh, on port 8080 
So this is the proxy settings. Okay. Uh, so now we can see the requests and responses in Burp. So let's try to log in. Uh, please at the rate subscribe dot subscribe please dot com uh, and password you can give anything here as well one two three four five a intercept is on login so we got the request let's send this to repeater and turn the intercept off so this is the error you will be getting if you are entering wrong credentials so let's play with this request here so let's try SQL injection because I know SQL injection <laughs> is there uh, I have already solved this previously so <clears throat> what is going on here is there is a backend query select star or uh, let's say username email ID or something some columns okay from table name we don't know let's say table name is user where email equal to our input email email and password equal to input password so this is something like this uh, query is uh, running in the background for this application and uh, we can control our email field as well as password field so if this if our input is going unsanitized like in this case it is going unsanitized so we can try to break out of this query okay that that uh, that is what we will be trying to do here is uh, so what we can do is instead of giving email address here uh, we can add single quote or one equal to one or two equal to two uh, and space minus minus so basically what is going on here is uh, instead of entering an email address like for example uh, please at the rate subscribe dot com uh, so this will be our input so we are closing this uh, single quote by by our own single quote which we have passed and after passing this single quote <coughs> we are just making uh, rest of the query as uh, comment and making this condition true so even if we are giving wrong email address so 
because this uh, we we have passed or here so or means either condition on the left side is true or on the right side is true so on the right side we have made the condition always true so even if the email address is invalid so query will return the rows uh so i hope that makes sense let's see this in action or 1 equal to 1 minus minus so plus is for uh, space so you can use plus okay in uh, instead of giving space or you can also uh use percentage 20 here so let's send this so you can see instead of getting a error so there is no wrong uh, wrong username password error here so now there is a 302 302 uh, is a redirection so basically we are able to log in if we follow redirect so you can see render can we render no so basically we are able to log in this is the payload let me intercept again log in paste this payload here and forward intercept off and you can see we are able to log in uh so currently we are logged in as mark houston user and upon checking the functionalities here we have profile update functionality we have uh, pay slips okay we have functionality to apply for leaves okay we have functionality to apply for reimbursement and we have functionality to log complaints uh so you can try out uh, stored xss or other type of injections here second order sqli or some blind xss can be there but i am going through the intended path so i already know that we have file upload uh, file upload functionality which we need to uh, abuse so let's do that so if you, if you see we have uh, reimbursement functionality so we can upload our receipts any amount browse so i have sample pdf and yeah let me show you as well that this is a normal pdf sample pdf okay So let's upload this, and I want to see this request as well. Intercept off. So our file is uploaded, and we can view our uploaded file. So this is the file which I have just uploaded. Okay. Normal file upload functionality. so now we already know that this is a php application because the extent you can see the extension of the files uh so let's try to upload 
malicious php code date amount browse uh, so for php code i am just i will just uh, upload this so this is a very simple php web shell so we uh, it it is taking a get parameter c uh, named as cmd and just passing it to the system so basically it is uh, this any command which will be passing to this parameter will be uh, will run on the uh, web server uh, so let's upload try to upload this it is in my where is the location open containing folder okay desktop aws code modules to web shell okay uh intercept on apply so we got our uh web shell and if you so let me pass this to intruder if you directly forward this uh, you will be getting an error file type not supported okay so this application only allows uh, documents it can be pdf doc excel so those types of documents it uh, it accepts so if you see there is a so when we uploaded a when we uploaded our web shell so the content type was uh, application slash x minus php whereas when we uploaded this pdf document so the content type was application slash pdf so what we can try to do is just modify this to the pdf one but we are uploading web shell so let's try to upload this and it seems it is uploaded if we reload here uh, yes you can see here this php document is uploaded so if i open this question mark cmd equal to id so we have command execution so pretty much straightforward we, you, you just need to change this content type from application slash uh, php to to this application slash pdf okay now next thing is to get a reverse shell so for getting a reverse shell you need to have a server with a public ip so i am already logged in to my uh, server with a public ip let me increase the font font size here so this is my public ip and you can go to rivshells.com uh, give your public ip here port number on which you will be listening so i will be listening on 443 
and choose the payload so we I already know that this is a Unix or you can run uname command uname command will only work in Unix so you can see we, we uh, this application is running on Unix uh, so let's use this payload try to use this first cmd equal to this and let's listen on this so I am using poncat uh, for uh, reversals because the, the reversal which you will be getting using poncat will be interactive so if you don't know about this you can install this as well this is the repository for poncat okay I will attach this link as well uh, in the description of this video so I have started listening uh, and let's press enter here and we didn't got anything dash minus C still nothing so if your reverse shell is not working the next thing you can try to do is we already know PHP is there so you can use PHP reverse shell payload that is this one and you can verify as well that PHP is there using which command which space PHP and let's sorry copy this paste enter still nothing let's see if we have python here okay python is also there let's try python payload copy paste enter and it worked so python uh, reverse shell payload worked So we got logged in as WW data user and currently we are in uh, reimburse, reimbursements directory. and you can now do your enumeration here so first thing uh, which I see is the database credentials in the uh, config.inc file database name or schema name is appdb password is this username is this and RDS instances the host name or the domain name of the server is this uh, so you can save this somewhere uh, so we got the access of RDS instance okay uh, next thing is 
you can list the root directory try to list the root directory so you you can see there is a file as docker env so which means uh, not exactly means but if you see this file that means you are in a container also you can uh, try to list slash dev directory and you can see there is no device uh, which you will see if you are in a physical device or a, or in a VM so if I show my own system ls minus la slash dev I will be seeing so these many devices okay and if you compare with this so there are very less devices in a container whereas uh, there are many many more devices in uh, in a physical device and there are no devices uh, with the name SDA or SDA12 so this, these are the disk uh, disk devices which stores our data uh, so there are no block devices here so that's how you can determine whether you are in a container or uh, in a physical device or in a VM also you can run enumeration scripts like linpeace so let's do that uh, so this is the location or github repo from where I am downloading this okay so I'm just downloading this and passing this to SH or you can first download this and then you can give execute permissions uh, using ch mode plus x and then also you can so you can do it uh, <coughs> however what you what you like to do you just need to run this so going through the output it is still running uh, we can see these are the environment variables and we have a URL So let me get one more reverse shell so that we can try out the things which we are seeing. So I got a URL. It is giving 404 page not found. Okay. Next thing is metadata URI. This is interesting. Let's try to access this and 
it is accessible so it is giving uh, giving us the information about this container docker id is this name is this image is this port number which is published is this cluster name is this <laughs> ARN of the resource is this CPU 2 memory 0 started at volumes container ARN network bridged IP address is this so if you see uh, the IP address of the container is 172.17.0.2 so you can assume or you can guess the IP address of the hosts uh, host will be 0.1 because when we start a container the so the interface will also be there on the host network interface will be there on the host as well so the first IP address is assigned to the host interface and after that uh, the subsequent containers will be assigned the IP address uh, so this is it let's see what is the other information which we got we got version 3 as well for this so currently we have accessed v4 let's see v3 as well I think it will be same call Yeah, same info. <coughs> so, uh, Linpeas will also tell you that this is a Docker container. Is this a container? Yes. And capabilities so you can see caps is p traces in red pardon <clears throat> so we have caps is p trace okay next thing is we got IAM role so these are the credentials of the uh, IAM role with which this ECS container is running and if you see we we are able to list the processes which is running system D so you can guess uh, from here as well that this container is uh, running with the option minus minus uh, PID equal to host but that means is the namespace of the the PID namespace of the host is being uh, shared by this container so there is no separate PID uh, 
namespace is created for this container it is sharing the same uh, namespace of that host that's why we are able to see the uh, processes of the host so system d process uh, runs on host containers do not have system d okay but we are able to access this process because namespace of the host is uh, is being shared by the container so uh, all these processes are host processes not all of these but this uh, system d is for sure is a host process and next let's see the other output So you can see we can run Vim as sudo. So this is uh, a potential privilege escalation vector. We can run Vim as sudo. Okay. And nothing much interesting yeah so this is it so let's see let's try to uh, run veeam as root as first so we can run this command as sudo copy sudo paste enter okay so this command is running as root so now if you check gtfo bins so if you are not aware of this gtfo bins uh, is similar to lol bins for windows so this uh, this contains all the binaries which allows you to run commands system commands so in our case we are able to run vim as root uh, so we can use any of these to run commands as root let's use the first one colon and paste sorry colon paste enter okay so we got root so we were able to escalate our privileges from www data user to root user now we can again get reversal as root and the command for that is this copy the payload paste ampersand disown so ampersand uh, will run the command in background disown will disown the process so the parent uh, so this this shell which we which i am running right now using vim will not be the parent of this python process so we are disowning this process this own not found 
Okay. Only M percent. Connection refused. Okay, so we got we already we you already got the reversal. Uh, so when we got this error, so we got the reversal as root. So now we got uh, root shell of the container. Okay. Now we already know that we can list the host processes. So let's do sorry PS minus EF once again and while going through these processes there must be a yeah this is the process so the CTF developer or whosoever has created this lab has uh, has has started this process or has uh, uh, written some configuration file to start this process for help us understanding or help us as a CTF solver to be able to solve this challenge so if you can see this is a python http server simple http server which is running on port number 314452 and our current ip address is okay config i i f config our current IP address is 172.17.0.2 so if we try to access this uh, simple HTTP server which is running on port number 31452 oh, okay sorry so we cannot access this okay why so because the, that process is not running on container that is a that process is running on host so if we change the IP address to that of host we are able to list files so using this process you can determine that this process is running on host not on the container so this is just for a reference this uh, the CTF developer has started this process for us to help us understand what is uh, that this process is running on host not on container uh, yeah, so this is it just for our convenience they have started this the CTF developer has started this process uh, so now we come to know that this is a host process not a container process and we we already uh, have capsis p trace capability so we can try to inject uh, shell codes shell code on the host process so for that uh, what we'll be doing is you can visit this link it is already 
here in the write up and you just need to copy this shell code from here so this is the shell code uh, this is a shell code for a bind shell and which will be start which will be listening on port number 5600 and you also need injector for this which you can find here uh, so you need to edit that injector uh, code instead of uh, passing this in the shell code you need to pass this sorry shell code for bind shell so I have already edited this so you can copy this uh, whole code from here copy and go to the temp directory create a file please subscribe.c and paste that code here save and you can see as well our code is saved with our bind shell payload then we just need to compile this gcc minus o on compiled dot pin you can name this anything uh, so it is compiled we got a binary compile dot bin so what we need to do is we just need to run this and if you see the help for this uh, where is the help so let's run this uh, right now just as it is so it will give you error that you need to run this like this so we need to give the PID of the process to which we want to inject the shell code so for this you can use you can choose any host process you just need to make sure that the process which you are using which you are choosing is a host process so all the demons are host process rpc bind is also a host process you can choose any one of these k thread is also a host process so for example let's use uh, rpc bind for example the process id for rpc bind is 2935 or you can use this that python web server as well that we have confirmed that that is running on host you can use that as well you can choose any host process space pid enter so the shell code is uh, injected successfully so what that means is uh, so now let's try to connect to our bind shell 
we already know that IP address is uh, IP address of host is one one seven two point one seven point zero point one and our bind shell is listening on port five six double zero and NC so if NC is not available you can transfer a static binary for NC okay to the container NC missing port number okay so we need to give port number like this ID so we got okay <laughs> so we got uh, access to the host but my current user is RPC and you might have guessed why this is the case so this is because uh, I have injected my payload into a process which is not running as root I have injected my payload to this process and this is not running as root this is running as user ID with uh, a user with user ID 32 so that's why I didn't got root shell okay so let's inject this to our simple HTTP server the process ID of that is this and now let's try to connect again ID now we are root okay so this time we have injected our uh, shell code into a process which is running as root so now we got root now let's uh, get reverse shell of the host so let's see whether we have python 3 on host which no python 3 no python 3 ID who am I which bash no bash in null so this shell is not stable I think so let's assume there is a python I already know that python is there on the host uh, so let me copy our previous shell payload once again copy and paste again ampersand this on and we got the reverse shell of host <clears throat> Uh, so now we where are we okay so we have seen this bottom part we started with SQL injection then we were able to upload file uh, so uh, exploiting the SQL injection we were able to bypass login then we uploaded a malicious PHP file and which got us the access of a container and after uh, breaking out of container we got access of a EC2 as root so we have uh, seen this bottom part so one thing is left is ECS container role so let's see that as well EC is yes. 
so when we were in container of as www data user so if you check environment variables here we have already seen as well that there is a metadata api with v3 and v4 where is v4 yeah this is the v4 and upon accessing this sorry we got the uh, properties of the container for getting i want to read credentials 170.0.0 to we to credentials no this is not RDS endpoint ECS agent yeah so this is the path which we need to access the credentials okay The path is stored in uh, this environment variable AWS container credentials relative URI. Yeah. So we got access key, secret access, secret access key, as well as token. So now what we need to do is just go to your credentials file and configure these credentials there. Secret access key is this copy paste. token is this copy paste save aws sts get caller identity and profile name is this here So we we have uh, privileges of so we are able to log in as this basically the ECS task role which is uh, which we found in container so our container is running with these privileges now there is a tool known as uh, enumerate IEM.
so you can download this from here okay I will also add this in description I have already installed this it is in my OPD directory so for running this you just need to use this command python3 and enumerate ap uh, enumerate iem.py file and then you need to pass access key and secret secret key and then token so that will uh, automatically enumerate the permissions and it will output that you can do these things Python 3 minus minus access key access key is this and minus minus secret secret key copy paste and minus minus token session token sorry session token is this copy paste so if you uh, if the sys admin or cloud administrator has configured cloud trails so this will be triggered okay uh, this will be triggered in cloud trails or cloud watch you will be getting alerts so our current container can list secrets can list DB clusters instances can list lambda functions So let's try to list secrets. And for that you need to have AWS here. And which is not the case. We already escalated our privileges to root within the container so you can install AWS here but rather than installing AWS in the container we can directly use the credentials because we have configured that in our credentials file as well uh, so for listing secrets this is the command and you need to specify region as well okay.
list secrets is the command which I am running and profile is the one which uh, we have just configured so we we found that a secret with rds underscore credits is there so for reading this you can use get secret value command for reading the secret aws secrets manager get minus secret secret value get secret value minus minus secret minus id is this then region and profile so same thing same credentials which we found in config file okay are stored in the secret as well let me save this command here I forgot to save this here in the write-up let me quickly do, do that okay yeah so we got secrets as well using this path ECS container role to secret manager and to RDS DB okay so now we have covered this middle part and as well as the bottom part now let's see uh, the permissions of EC2 instance again let's check environment variables here don't have anything container so we can see container which we have uh, pond is this one so we already know that uh, there is a metadata API for uh, <coughs> easy to you can search on Google as well or you can try to use Google Docs in site ps on your to you dot medium dot com and we want to see metadata we want to search for metadata so what what I just did is I am searching within my medium blog means in all all of the blogs this keyword metadata and the first output is first result is this yeah so this is the one we need EC2 let's go back once one more directory info security credentials one more 
लेटेस्ट डायनेमिक मेटा डेटा यूजर डेटा मेटा डेटा आई एम सिक्योरिटी क्रेडेंशियल्स ECS instance role okay so we got more credentials let's configure that as well those as well here copy paste copy secret access key paste here then copy token paste here save the file aws sts profile is easy to aws code in this case yeah so now we got access of ecs instance role let's enumerate permissions of this again same command we just need to change credentials secret access key is this paste access key is this paste to do session token is this copy paste enter so we can list roles we can do operations on ec2 we can run ssm commands Okay, so many things which which we can try. Uh, list roles, list accounts, get account summary, instance profiles. so this is interesting let's uh, check the instance instance profile first which instance profile is linked to this ec2 which we are running right now which we got access so aws get 
instance sorry ec2 help This one. Yeah. Instance. list instance profile list instance profiles aws iam list instance profiles help okay we don't need to pass anything else minus minus profile is uh, this ec2 aws code and we got two profiles one with the name ec2 instance profile and one with the name ec2 deployer so two instance profiles are available in this aws account okay so now we can ecs instance profile uh, so we can now try to enumerate each one of these let's see uh, ec2 deployer first so this instance profile has a, a role name ec2 deployer role whereas ecs instance profile has a ecs instance role so this is the role which we currently have if i show you once again sts okay so you can see ecs instance role uh, we have our uh, rec2 which we have uh, pawned right now is running with this ecs instance role so what that means is our EC2 has this instance profile attached to it. Okay, so we already have permis these permissions. Now, what is interesting for us is the other uh, this EC2 deployer instance profile. Now, we don't know what are the privileges for this role. So let's try to get these privileges. So for uh, getting the privileges or getting the permissions uh, of this role, we can just try to list managed policy first. Sorry. ECS instance role we already have we need to 
check EC2 deployer rule. Okay, so we have a managed policy attached to it with the name EC2 deployer admin policy. Let's see the permission of this. This is the command for that. So this is a admins uh, admin access policy. We can run anything on any resource. So very, very dangerous. Policy is attached to this rule. So we have determined that EC2 deployer role is a high privilege role, and that role is attached to this EC2 deployer instance profile. So if by any chance we we can uh, attach this instance profile to, to our EC2 instance or a new EC2 instance, so we will be able to get administrator privileges. Okay. And we have already determined that we can run SSM commands. So by SSM, uh, by having privileges to run SSM commands means we can run commands within within a EC2 instance. Okay. So by combining these three things, we have determined that we can run instances because we got the permissions if I show you run instance permission it should be somewhere here no So let's try to enumerate our uh, enumerate our current permissions first. I forgot to show you this. So currently we we got to know that we can run SM commands, okay. But we still don't know that we can start AC2 instance or not for that let's list our current privileges first so our current uh, role is this ECS instance role So if you see, we have a permissions boundary policy attached to it. So permissions boundary is just like a additional security mechanism. It is having some permissions which uh, it is kind of a white list. Okay. So we can run only those things which are specified in this document uh, boundary policy document. So let's read this.
command for that is this so we can run only these commands we can list anything in IAM we can get anything we can pass roles we can put roles we can run okay any SSM command so yeah this is the privilege which I was talking about so we can run EC2 instances we can describe current instance or any other instances we can run a new container service yeah so these are the effective permissions which we have so let's try to run a new ec2 instance because we have permissions and then we have already determined that ec2 deployer is a high privileged role so we will pass that role to in to our newly created ec2 instance so let's do this quickly so for running a ec2 instance or starting a new ec2 instance we need subnet id image id instance profile name we already know uh, instance type which uh, means which instance type you want to start security group IDs you you need to know so for all these things uh, there are different commands which you can use to get these things so for uh, AMID, AMI ID you can directly uh, describe your current EC2 instance which we have or you can go to AWS console and then you can see the AMI ID you can copy any any one of the AMI ID from here for subnet ID we need to describe we need to use this command describe subnets so let's do this first describe subnets so subnet id is this copy that and save somewhere so we got subnet id ami, AMI id i'm copying from here and next thing is uh, subnet group id command for that is this describe sub security groups So subnet group ID is this so we got these th th three things now we are ready to start a new EC2 instance let me paste that here we need to replace subnet id image id is yeah same subnet group id is this subnet group id yeah here yeah 
Yeah, rest of the things remain same. Copy. Paste. Enter. Okay. So we we were able to start a new uh, EC2 instance. Now let's try to run commands within this. So for that we need instance ID of this instance which we just started. Just replace that. So the command which I ran is which open SL. So I am so I am uh, basically trying to see whether open SSL is there or not within that uh, new EC2 instance. It should be there. OpenSSL is uh, already available in every container and uh, as well as in every uh, AMI ID. Sorry. So after running, after sending the command, for seeing the output, you need to copy this ID and then you need to pass this to get command invocation. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Copy. Let's paste here first. Command invocation ID is this paste instance ID is this paste copy paste enter. Okay, yeah, so this is the location of OpenSSL. So this is the output of uh, our command which we ran, which open as cell, okay. Uh, so we got to know that open as cell, open as cell is there. So if you search within GTFO bin, open SSL, you can see open as cell also allows us to get reverse shells. So you may ask me why I am using OpenSSL instead of using a normal reverse shell payload because I have tried the, those, all of those and none of those worked actually. So this works, this worked so that's why I am using this OpenSSL reverse shell. Uh, So first thing is you need to create certificates then you need to start listening and I want to listen on port 443 once again. and then we need to send this command uh, instead of which open is cell and now 
if you see we got a reversal okay host name so this is our new ec2 instance which we just created and this has uh, ec2 deploy role attached to it again let's see the credentials so ec2 deployer role credentials we got yeah so this is it we have seen module 2 paths <coughs> sorry for aws code so we start again uh, let me reiterate what we did we started uh, with sql injection we, we bypassed the login then we have used file upload functionality we got access of a container and then we break out of that container then we got into host and uh, within the host we came to know that this host has some excessive privileges and uh, we came to know that there is a permissions boundary which is uh, which is kind of a whitelist which, which is allowing some of uh, the privileges then we we got to know that we have IAM password privileges as well as we can run new EC2 instances so we created a new EC2 instance and passed a high privileged role to that EC2 instance and then we uh, we got reversal of a new EC2 instance which we just created using send SSM command uh, yeah so this is it I hope you liked it thanks for watching bye